Well, good morning, guys. I'm so glad that we are virtually gathered this morning. Before we go into our time of prayer and then come back at the end to pray together, I want to share a couple thoughts with you on worship. I want to start in Matthew 2. I love the story of the wise men. And this is a story that we so often only visit during the Christmas season, but it's one of my favorite stories to visit all throughout the year because I love the story of these three guys, okay? And they see this sign, which was the star in the east, and they make a decision to follow this star because they knew that this star was going to lead them to an encounter with Jesus. They were determined to go and find where baby Jesus was and worship him. They were on a journey to see Jesus. And I encourage you to go into Matthew 2, um, really starting at verse 1 all through 11 and read that. I'm not going to hit it all right now. But they follow the signs that God gave that would lead them to an encounter with him. And I feel like in a way, we're all on a journey during these 10 days. We want to keep our eyes wide open and we're following the signs and the wonders that God is giving us all along the way to lead us to a deeper place in our walk with him, to lead us in his purpose, to lead us to discover maybe the calling that he has on your life. Maybe you've yet to discover that. And so these 10 days, you're really seeking the Lord to hear him speak and give you direction. We're all hungry for an encounter with the Lord. We're all seeking his face together. And I just, I love the story of the wise men and how it sets us up and shows how they followed the signs to that place, to where they would worship at the feet of Jesus. You know, coming up tonight is our worship night. Our team is so excited to join with you in worship tonight at 530. And even before that, we're going to gather together in just a couple hours to worship the Lord. So we have a day full of worship ahead of us. But I believe it's so important to understand as believers that worship goes so much farther than just a song. It is so much more. Worship is our lives. It's what pours out of our hearts before the Lord. You know, this is so much easier said than done. So really quick, I just want to hit three things, three choices, if you will, that I believe we all have to make so that we can have lifestyles of worship, so that in the daily grind, we are worshiping Jesus, so that our worship goes far beyond a song. The first decision that we have to make is we have to invite Jesus into our daily lives. Recently, I had a student come over to my house for lunch and she was sharing, or a student leader, sorry, she was sharing with me about her trip to Chile with R212 recently. They spent a couple weeks over there and she was sharing all kinds of amazing testimonies and stories. She shared that one of the greatest things she learned was that God is in the details. She went on to share story after story of God revealing himself to her through the smallest, seemingly insignificant details. And as she spoke, it was so cool because I was filled with like fresh awe and wonder of Jesus. And I had this revelation, um, just like she did, that God wants to be fully involved in the daily details of my life. And I would say that to you this morning. God has a desire to be involved in the details. You know, so often we separate church and ministry and service. You know, when we're at church, we're aware. Our eyes are wide open. We're looking for his signs and his wonders. We're looking for a move of his spirit. We're ready to hear and respond and press through any distraction. We're there to worship. But then there's the daily grind and daily life, right? when I'm home with the kids, or when we walk into work, if we were there to worship, what would that look like? If I had the attitude, you know what, I'm here to worship. How can I worship Jesus in my mothering? How can I worship Jesus by the way that I work at my job? How can I worship him even in my marriage? Inviting Jesus into the daily details of our life is such a powerful act of worship. The second decision I think we have to make is we have to intentionally direct our hearts. You know, Jeremiah 17 tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things. The heart really can lead us astray. So I don't leave it up to my heart personally. This is a lesson I've learned over the last few years that I can't leave my worship up to my heart. And I know that may sound a little weird, but go with me here. My heart can easily get very consumed by emotions. It can lead me down the wrong path of self-pity, of jealousy, of pride. Sometimes in some seasons, let's be honest, our hearts are just weary or weak or maybe broken. So I don't want to let my heart determine if I'm going to worship Jesus and, and base it on how I'm feeling in that moment. Worship does come natural. Yes, we all worship something, but worshiping Jesus doesn't always come natural. There are many objects pulling for our attention, for our affection, and even for our worship. God really is looking for hearts that worship him. True, authentic, passionate, 
a pouring out of our hearts and lives before him. So it's our job as followers of Jesus to give direction to our heart. There's two things that I pray in the morning when I get before the Lord. The first thing is I take authority over my mind and I take every thought captive. The second thing is I give direction to my heart for the day. Setting our hearts on the right course and intentionally making that decision to be on a course that, you know what, today, no matter what happens or comes my way, I am going to worship. That gives purpose to our worship. And the last choice that I think we need to make so that we can truly live lifestyles of worship is that we have to choose worship over worry. This is a choice that only we can make for ourselves. No one can make this choice for you. And worry will always win if you don't choose to worship. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. When we pray, when we worship, when we come before him with thanksgiving, we experience the peace of God and worry is suddenly diminished. Think about a hard season maybe that you've walked through. Many of us have testimonies of this. Me personally, um, right after we had our first child, Jude, um, I was not prepared for the postpartum depression that I would experience. And, you know, I, I knew it was a real thing, but I had never struggled with that. And it was like a gut punch, man, right after we had him. It was real. It was intense. I struggled with some of the most intense loneliness I have ever felt in my life. I had no vision for my life. All of a sudden, this familiar life, even with all of these people around me, everything felt so unfamiliar. I came to a point, thankfully, by the grace of God, where the worry and the weight of depression drove me to the feet of Jesus. I was a broken, weary, lonely, and crushed mess, and I fell at his feet. I began to cry out to him for help, and that's actually the place where we wrote the song, Nothing Left to Give, came out of. I really had nothing left to give, but I realized that I could worship my way through the storm. I could worship my way to healing and wholeness. Worship puts things in the right perspective. It makes worry smaller and God bigger. You know, I didn't know how long it would take. I didn't know how long this depression and this, this bout of loneliness would last. But by worshiping, I got the strength and the peace that I needed to worship my way through the storm. It caused me to tighten my grip on hope. So this morning, as we prepare to go into our time of personal prayer and then we come back together to pray together, I want to encourage you to make these three decisions. Number one, to invite Jesus into the details of today and of this week. Number two, to intentionally direct your heart on a course of worship this morning. And number three, I want to encourage you to choose worship over worry. So let's spend some time in prayer this morning.
Okay, let's gather back together at this time, and we're going to pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing this morning. God, we thank you for speaking to our hearts. God, I thank you that every time we seek your face, that you meet us right where we are, that we have an open invitation into your presence this morning. God, that we don't have to get everything together in our lives and tidy things up before we can come before you, but that you invite us to come to you just as we are. Even those who are weary, God, even those who are broken, you say even in your word, come to me all who are weary, who are broken and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So this morning, Lord, as we gather, God, we receive your rest. We receive your peace. God, we thank you for the gift that worship is in our own lives. God, that you bring us together, not just to corporately worship, but that that we have an opportunity personally, God, one-on-one to worship you. God, that you use so many signs and wonders in our lives, and even during these 10 days, to draw us close to you, Lord. God, we thank you for the gift of worship. This morning, we ask that you would help us to have the courage it takes to invite you into the details of our lives. God, we know that that's a really vulnerable place to be when we trust you with all of the details. When we invite you, God, when I invite you into my parenting, when I invite you into my marriage, God, when I invite you into my home, God, that's pretty much saying, Lord, come and and have your way here. Change what needs to be changed. Heal what needs to be healed. God, breathe on my parenting, breathe on my marriage, breathe on my home. But this morning, Lord, we have the courage and we just say, Holy Spirit, would you come into every detail of our lives, every moment of this day that's ahead of us, every moment of our week. We not only want to feel you and see you and know that your presence is real, God, but we want to honor you in the things that we do and we say. God, we want to live lives of worship, so we invite you into the details. Lord, we make a decision right now to intentionally direct our hearts on a course of worship. God, we say to our hearts that we will seek the face of Jesus, that we will press into you, that we will lean in to hear what it is you want to say in our lives, God. God, we ask you to stir up a hunger in our hearts for more of your presence. God, we ask you to kindle the flames inside of our spirits that we would burn with passion for you, for your name, for your presence. God, and that this fire and this passion would pour out of our lives. God, to every person that we encounter today, every person that we encounter this week, that this passion and this love and this hunger that we have for you would be contagious. God, we tell our hearts today to seek the face of Jesus. Even if our hearts are weak or tired or broken, God, we come before you with humility, recognizing our need for a Savior, and we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we make a decision this morning. We choose worship over worry. God, we don't want to be weighed down by worry. We don't want worry to to be what leads our decisions, God. We want to be led by you, by your spirit. So we lay our worry at the feet of Jesus this morning. We lay our concerns, we lay our fears at the feet of Jesus. God, we know that a transaction takes place in this moment, Lord, that instead of worry, that you give us peace. Instead of fear, you give us love and courage. Instead of weakness, you fill us with your strength right now. So we receive that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities we have ahead today to worship you. We thank you for the power of agreement that happens when we gather together in worship. And we do ask you, Lord, not just in our own lives and in our families and our homes and in our community, in our church. God, we ask you for a mighty move of your spirit, that you would make yourself known and that you, Jesus, would be exalted and glorified that you would have first priority in our lives. God, we worship you today, not just through song, but we pour out our hearts before you in worship. May every detail of our lives, every decision that we make, bring glory and honor to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
We hope that you have a blessed day, and we're so excited to see you this morning and to see you at tonight's worship night. God bless you.